we are going to talk about the death of the GSU bodyguard of Rafael Tuju. He was Rafael Tuju's bodyguard and he was Rafael Tuju's driver. I do not, I'm not sure whether at the time of his death Rafael Tuju had employed him privately or he was still employed by the police and attached to Rafael Tuju's person. I'm not sure of which of the two. But initially, he started off as Rafael Tuju's driver stroke bodyguard while he was a GSU officer. And as I've said, I'm not sure whether at the time of his death, we have so many cases where you find that uh, somebody agrees with the employer to be employed privately. I will not go into reasons, but one of the major reasons is that uh, there are times when the police service wants to transfer this person elsewhere and that person and the VIP feel that they should continue working together. So the VIP says that how much are you being paid and then they agree and then the, the bodyguard now goes to the firearms bureau to seek for a private firearm. But then I don't know whether this person was still employed by the police service or not but at the time of his death he was both the driver and the bodyguard as i as i keep saying whether he was a private bodyguard or a gsu bodyguard i and a stroke driver i do not know but let me say this uh before tuju joined politics he was in there he was a journalist he had even started a company, a communication company, which I believe is called S Communications Company. Now, this S Communication Company won a tender to spread and inform people information about HIV AIDS. And you know, getting a contract from an international body is very well paying. So when Rafael Tuju's company won that contract, uh, it was to spread, his company was to spread information, all you need to know about HIV AIDS, including knowing whether you have HIV AIDS or not. And when you have, is it you as an individual who has or you are a couple that is called discordant discordant couple is a couple where one of the partners has hiv and the other does not have so they spread in they spread information on how to prevent you contracting hiv aids and when you contract how to live positively they also included information on how to go about living when one of the couple is HIV positive and the other one is negative. And so to show by examples what they were preaching, employees, including the owner of the company, had to undergo HIV tests. So Rafael Tuju and his wife Akinyi. I'm not sure whether she's Akinyi, but even if she's not Akinyi, let us call her Akinyi. They went for HIV, for, for HIV tests. When they went for HIV tests, Rafael Tuju was found to be HIV positive. Akinyi, his wife, was found to be HIV negative. So they had to live that life. They had to live a life of how to live while uh, a married couple that was HIV uh, discordant. 
when they lived that life, there is something that uh, this is. Uh, I'm trying to control myself not to talk things that um, that I'm not supposed to talk. But anyway, let me talk. Uh, there is this saying that kutafuna uh, sweeti ikiwa kwa pakiti. That is for those who know about HIV. Uh, prevention will know what I mean. Kutafuna suiti bila ikiwa na kutafuna peremende ikiwa na pakiti. Hauto ipakiti. So, it was uh, they, they, they had to undergo a regime that was strict. Uh, that is to prevent HIV moving from Tuju to Akinyi. And that one included what I've just said. Kutafuna suiti bila kutumia eh, kutafuna suite bila kutumia bila kutoa eh, pakiti and akinyi on her own decision felt that there was need to have real hmm? real life eh? real life eh, eh, experience by real life experience i want to say this there is a difference between watching wrestling on TV and going to the stadium and watching those people eye to eye. So she wanted to watch wrestling eye to eye, but not watch through TV. I hope you understand what I mean. So one time she approached her husband's driver, stroke bodyguard. She made a proposal. A proposal that I'll not tell you, but I, I think you know what it is. She made a proposal. He thought about it. You know, in any business deal, I can call it a business deal. You lay your expectations on the table. You say, this is what I want. And whatever, whatever. And you? And then the other person lies down uh, his or her condition. Now the bodyguard, the GSU man, bodyguard stroke driver, said this way you know that i cannot make that decision alone well other people make it alone but him he said he was not to make a decision alone other other stories say that it is akinyu who, to, who asked him whether he was married, how many wives he had, and so on and so forth. But anyway, somehow they said that his wife, he was married to one wife. So they said that because of the, 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 the nature of the arrangement, it was mandatory for his wife, for the GSU driver stroke bodyguard wife to be involved, informed and involved. So she was called. She was called and she came there. She was put into the picture. Now, let me go back to my, my, the, the, the topic I like most. Tribalism. We have people, women, a woman who is a bukusu, a woman who is a luo. She is very much easier to accept formal or informal polygamy. But a, a lady who is a Maragoli, you marry her. You can marry her as the seventh wife. But after marrying her, if you are to marry another woman after her, don't, don't, if you have as big trees as you can see I have here, be very careful. One day, you'll find her on top hanging. Maragolis don't like sharing men, Maragoli women. But for Luo and Bukusu women, it's just uh, acceptable telling the wife that uh, you are not alone, such and such a thing. It is more acceptable among Luo and Bukusu women. But Maragoli, <laughs> don't try. If you have married to a Maragoli, forget about that. So this fellow, there was a meeting. There was a meeting between the bodyguard, the GSU bodyguard, 
Akinyi, Ms. Akinyi Tujo, and Mrs. Bodyguard. They had a discussion, and uh, the bodyguard's wife was told that uh, they are entering into an an enemy triangle, where there is one. There is, they are going to share the bodyguard, and so she the, 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 she went. She told them, and the three of them, Akinyi. The GSU bodyguard stroke driver and the Mrs. GSU bodyguard stroke driver, they went to a HIV uh, AIDS testing place. They, they were tested. The three of them were found to be HIV negative. So, uh, Mrs. Tuju said that uh, from that time henceforth, uh, she faced that woman and said, in case you usually go out, from today you will not go out. Because you go out, you will bring something to the GSU bodyguard stroke, uh, bodyguard stroke uh, driver, and the bodyguard stroke driver will bring that thing to me. So from today on, forth, know that there is this arrangement and live within it. And the driver was similarly told to restrain himself within his wife and Akinyi Tuju and nowhere else. It was agreed. Then came the part. What do we, what do we get while we do this? Uh, of course, in Kenya, that is money. Mrs. GSU driver stroke... Uh, Mrs. GSU driver stroke uh, bodyguard remembered about her thirteenth cousin who has who has uh, school fees issues. So everything, whatever she laid on the table, were fulfilled. They and they now they, they started living a life that was beyond their means because they were now getting money from the two Jews. Now, if you want to know about two Jews. Look at it this way. <clears throat> Tuju has a house, which I think he now has a problem, but the house is in the current area and it is estimated to be worth two, two billion shillings. And then uh, <clears throat> they have also another uh, plot in Upper Hill. Upper Hill is considered to be the most expensive land in Kenya. The, the, the plot that they have is... Uh, on Upper Hill side, or can I call it Lower Hill? Lower Hill side, facing Nyayo Stadium. There is a rail here, and uh, on on one side, on one side there is Nyayo Stadium, and on the other side is Upper Hill houses, a plot of which are a number of flats which are owned by the two Jews. So these are rich people. So it's saying that uh, they, they, they need to have uh, whatever whatever amount of money. Uh, they, they they need to have a, a whatever whatever kind of money so as to have a certain lifestyle. Everything is money, yeah. So they agreed. They continue living that way. Whereby, when Akinyi wanted to watch WWE wrestling on TV, he would, she would watch from her house. But when she wanted to watch it live live in a stadium arena. She would make arrangements with the bodyguard stroke watchman to go wherever they went. Of course, it was so open that I would not be shocked if Akinyi is the one who would tell Mrs. GSU bodyguard stroke driver that today we are going with him to, <clears throat> he'll be away for two days and I'll be with him. So uh, the, the arrangements was that way, and the arrangement was working on well. But let me tell you, something that is not well doesn't end well. <clears throat> uh, they continued that way. The only person who did not know what was happening was Raphael Tuju. Raphael Tuju didn't know of the arrangements. So what happened was, it reached a time, <clears throat> it reached a time when the driver stroke bodyguard, GSU man, called Akinyi aside. And she said, there is a girl 
who is heavy. She's pregnant and I am responsible. Now, if she carries on the pregnancy to the end, I'll be forced to marry her. I'll be forced to marry her and uh, I don't want that and, uh, and it's, it, it even complicates our own mathematics, our formula here, our body mass here. Yeah, <laughs> this is when it, the, the, the word body mass work, the, the, the calculation of body mass works. Eh? Body, then mass. Eh? Uh, so it is a bit difficult for what will happen. So he said, what? Uh, let us do this thing. Eh? Let us talk to the girl. Let us talk to her. She procures uh, abortion. And you know, in Kenya, abortion is, Ill, is, is what? Abortion is illegal. So the doctor performing the abortion has to be overpaid. The girl has also to come up. She agrees to, uh, to abort and she has to be compensated well so as not to carry on the abortion for some time. So the first girl, Akakuja, she was paid handsomely, she went. Second girl, she went. Third girl, she went. I don't know how many they were. But then it reached a place when Akinji said, look here. She did, okay, to them, to her, the money she was paying these girls to abort, the money she was, whatever favor she was doing, was change to pesa kidogo kwake. But what she came to realize, how are these girls getting pregnant? It means that the bodyguard, the GSU bodyguard stroke driver was entering in unprotected affairs with these girls. Now for three girls to be pregnant, it means that she only knew about it when the girls became pregnant. If they would not have become pregnant, she would not have known. And when we use body mass, eh? body mass to say manin, brackets of eh? the division, addition, multiple, eh? that is what used to happen. Eh? I've forgotten about body mass. Now, but this is body, body, body mass. Eh? And I, she started reasoning. Now, if this fellow has impregnated the three girls it you cannot impregnate the girls first of all he had been under instructions to keep himself within his wife and akini and here he was having other ladies out there and you see for three pregnant for every one pregnant lady how many ladies has he been having unsafe, uh, unsafe uh, interaction with them without observing. And, 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 and they, he had been told. He was not even told to have a, what you call safe uh, sex with them. No. He had been instructed by Akinyi to keep off all female apart from his wife and Akinyi. Well, for a lady to be pregnant, it means there are several more who are not pregnant. And, it mean, and for a lady to be pregnant, it means that she, they were observing unsafe sex. And he was not even supposed to even <laughs> observe what we call a safe sex. No, he was supposed to restrain from any lady apart from the two, his wife and a king. So this one annoyed a king. This annoyed a king. And the other thing, I want to say this thing. Uh, although I don't approve, but uh, it is easier for a man to have affairs or even marry a woman age of his children yes the age of his children or a woman whose parents are his age mates but it gives a very hard picture or funny picture or it is not even accepted in african society 
in Kenyan society when the man is the age of her sons or the man's mother is the same age as this lady. It, 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 it doesn't. So that is the arrangement that was there between Akinyi and the bodyguard. And uh, there is a, a second plot in Upper Hill where this bodyguard used to stay with uh, Akinyi's sons and they used to fight. Let me tell you, I have seen boys who are my age mates I've, and, 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 and I'm a former police officer. Ladies, if you date boys uh, the same age as your sons, there are many cases of finding your boyfriend and your son fighting physically. Fighting physically. So they used to fight. And then uh, the, bod the bodyguard was murdered. When he was murdered, 88% of the chances are that Akini organized for his murder. And 11% is that her son organized for his, for the, his mother. One percent is since we engine water to cook you one person. Ninety-nine percent are either Akini has and her son. Now Akini accounts for eight eight percent and her son eleven percent. That adds up to uh, that that adds up to ninety-nine. And that viewers is how uh Rafael Tuju's bodyguard stroke uh, driver met his death.